Getting held back by your equipment is one of the most annoying feelings in any video game. So today I'll go over exactly what the best equipment in Fortnite is. Everything from what monitors to keyboards, mouse pads, and everything else you need to be an extremely solid player. I'll give you the best option in the world if price is not a problem of yours, as well as an option that, in my opinion, is great value for money for all of us that unfortunately have to have a peek at the price tag. Let's get right into the equipment. Finding out what monitor is the best one for Fortnite has been a mission of mine for around a year now, as I genuinely believe people underestimate just how much easier the game becomes when played on a top tier screen. Now, I do want to note that in my eyes, the answer for the best monitor in the world is extremely easy, but that is because I personally value three things when looking at monitors. A high refresh rate, good colors, and no ghosting. For some people, buying a screen with incredible brightness might be crucial, or you might value top tier longevity, meaning a monitor that would last you a lifetime. These are things I, as a Fortnite player, don't really mind that much. Changing a screen every fifth or so year is totally okay for me. So if you're like me and value hurts, beautiful colors, and seeing no ghosting at all on your opponents, then the Alienware AW2725DF is without a shadow of a doubt the best monitor for you. This monitor plays at 360 hertz, which some people might look at as totally unnecessary. But having played on it and testing the difference between 240 and 360, I gotta say I much prefer 360. You obviously won't play at 360 consistently in endgames if you play competitive exclusively, but when practicing and just playing ranked or creative, this is an absolute joy to play on. The cons of the monitor is unfortunately that the brightness isn't at the very peak of what is possible in the massive world of monitors, but as previously mentioned, that has not really been an issue at all when it comes to playing Fortnite. Additionally, the monitor comes with a ridiculous price tag of $900, and it place at 1440p, which demands an ultra-solid set of specs in your computer to run smoothly. But if these are all criterias that fits your current situation and you have the available capital to comfortably buy this one, there is a 0% chance you will regret it, as it is undeniably the best gaming monitor in the world right now. When it comes to monitors that are fantastic value for money, there are simply no screens out there that can even come close to competing with the Curate 24 E3. This monitor comes with a price tag of just $160, and it can be found as low as $115 when it's at its lowest. It's 165Hz, the colors are surprisingly good, and this one is all around a fantastic starter display for anyone looking to get into competitive Fortnite, or even just gaming in general for that matter. Because monitors are such a passion of mine, and as I think monitors are super important, I also want to add an additional one to this video, a kind of medium priced screen. The absolute best mid-tier monitor monitor right now is the Gigabyte M27QX. This one comes in at anywhere from just under $400 to $450, and it's just like the previously mentioned Alienware monitor running at 1440p, which is a pleasure to play on, but probably not the best of choices for lower tier PCs, as your PC will have to render in way more pixels than on a 1080p monitor like the Curate 24E3. What, however, is extremely good is the response times, meaning playing at a one will feel incredibly smooth. It's a 240Hz panel and overall just unbeatable currently in the $400 price range. Moving on over to keyboards, the Wooding 60AG remains as the best keyboard on the market. This keyboard is the fastest, both practically and theoretically. The real travel time of the keys of the Wooding remains faster than the SteelSeries Apex Pro. Although that is not to say that the Apex Pro isn't a fantastic keyboard, because it is, but the Wooding still remains slightly better better. Both of these keyboards have a theoretical actuation of 0.1, so whether you go for the Wooding or the SteelSeries Apex Pro, you won't go wrong by any means. However, for me, when buying a new keyboard, the choice is easy. Wooding all the way. Not only because it's the fastest keyboard in the world, but it also has far superior build quality and feel to the Apex Pro in my opinion. When it comes to budget keyboards, there is yet again a clear winner, the Razer Huntsman Mini. For just $80, right now, you can get this incredible incredible keyboard. Now, although this keyboard isn't as fast as either the Wooding or Apex on paper, the feel of the keyboard is fantastic for a game like Fortnite. In addition, the switches on the keyboard use a beam of light to register keystrokes. So compared to something a little more old school, like red, brown, or blue cherry switches, this keyboard will feel lightning fast. If I just got into competitive Fortnite, I would have definitely bought this very keyboard, as there is no other one on the market that gives this much value for money. 
money. For gaming mice, there are a lot of contenders. Unfortunately, not a lot of great ones though. For some reason, gaming mice always strive in one area, for example, the shape and clicks, but suck in another. For example, scroll wheel. And you can mix and match these strengths and weaknesses however you'd like, and you'd probably be describing one of the most popular mice out there. For me, the best all-around mouse, after having tested just around 40, is the Razer Viper V2. This mouse has a reliable scroll wheel, which is incredibly important in a game like Fortnite. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about my G Pro X Superlight, which I really love the shape of. And sadly, my all-time favorite mouse, the Lamsu Atlantis, also let me down in the scroll wheel department, in that it just stopped working altogether. Not once, but on two different Lamsus in the span of just one year. Naturally, you might be thinking that this is a me problem, and you might be right in thinking so. However, I've heard lots of other people also struggling with the very same issues with the GPX and the Lamsu. The Razer Viper V2, if you're looking to buy it, costs $100. It weighs 58 grams, and as it stands right now, this is the best mouse for competitive Fortnite. Now, for the budget version, the choice is surprisingly simple. The best budget mouse is the Dormo Shark M3. For $43, you get a mouse with fantastic clicks, a great shape, and it weighs in at just 58 grams. The build quality out of the box isn't fantastic, but it isn't by any means terrible. If you feel as though it's a problem, I've seen multiple people simply lubing the mouse a little bit and screwing the screws on tighter. And apparently the build quality goes from a 5 out of 10 to a 8 out of 10 when this is done. The side buttons aren't top tier either, but again, nothing really too bad. Other than that, the mouse is incredibly impressive for the price, and it won't hold you back in getting you where you want in competitive games. Before moving on to mouse pads, I do want to say that most gaming mice nowadays are good. So whether you have the G Pro X Superlight, a Razer mouse, or a Dharma Shark M3, you will be able to compete at the highest level. I just personally find it super annoying that the lifespan of the scroll wheels of many mice are so short, because it's frustrating when scroll wheel reset doesn't work in a fight, and you go down because of that. Moving on over to mouse pad territory, there is no objective answer to what the best pad is for everyone. Some people might like super fast pads, whereas others prefer slower, more control-oriented mouse pads. My favorite mouse pad is by far the Artisan Hayato Utsu in mid-hardness. The feel of the pad is smooth, but you still get a very confident feel of control when using it. It's easy to stop the mouse when you need to flick fast to either shoot a shotgun shot, or if you have to flick when tracking from one opponent to another. In addition to all of this, I've had this ridiculously priced $77 mouse pad for a year now, and by the look of things, it seems as though I can have it for another four. The pad is more or less just like new, and I'm super impressed with the quality of it, something you kind of would expect for an almost $80 piece of rubber. The budget option I've picked for today's video is the Aqua Control Plus. Now, Extra Pad, who is the brand behind the Aqua Control Pads, have released a newer model, the Aqua Control 2, and these ones are fantastic as well, but I gotta admit, the Plus model is my favorite of these two. This mouse pad comes in at $35, which in reality isn't all that cheap, but it will last you forever due to how durable it is. And I think it's better to buy one $35 mouse pad that can last you five years compared to three $12 pads in the span of the same five years. The Aqua Control Plus is a relatively fast mouse pad, which makes tracking opponents super easy. Just like with the Hayato Utsu, the stopping power of this pad is also really good. So when you flick onto an enemy, you can trust that the mouse pad won't hold you back when your mouse movement stops. The one slightly bad thing about the pad is that the surface isn't buttery smooth like it is on the Hayato Utsu. It's a bit rougher, but honestly, I kind of like it. Although some might find it a bit different to play on compared to most other pads. For headsets, the objectively speaking best one, if price is not an option, is the Ace Zone a rice However, unless you're the son of a millionaire, the price tag of $800 will probably be way too much. But I wanted to add it in here so that you know what the best the market has to offer is. What makes it so unbelievable is how the headset enhances the sound of footsteps through the company's algorithm. So you'll be able to hear opponents further away and louder when, for example, playing endgames. It kind of feels like you're cheating when you have this headset on. Now, if you're looking for a gaming headset in the $100 price range, nothing currently compares to the HyperX Cloud 3. Not only is the microphone simply exceptional, but the overall sound image the Cloud 3 is able to produce is incredible. When you've played on it for just a few hours, you'll know exactly where the footsteps around you are coming from, and you'll be able to pinpoint where the opponent is. The one bad thing that I have to mention about this headset is that it's not 
not bass heavy at all. So if you're someone who really loves that intense bass feel, then I'd definitely go for another set. But other than that, I seriously have no complaints at all about my Cloud 3, especially not considering it's priced at just $100. When it comes to chairs, the best one out there right now is the Herman Miller and Buddy. The price point is $1750, so it's insanely expensive, but it will last you a lifetime and your back will thank you for it if you ever decide to buy it. For my budget version, I have to go with the IKEA Marcus chair. For 170 bucks, you get a chair that is many times better than any gaming chair on the market. Gaming chairs, although they may look cool, are in my opinion not comfortable at all. This is my subjective opinion though, but I'm sure some of you, if not most of you, will agree here. All the products I've mentioned in today's video are linked in the description, so if any of them sparked any interest, then they're all organized by name down below.